I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> um, I guess I'll make this a part two because part one uh, was cut off by me hitting the wrong button. There's a page button that you can hit and it'll show you the, uh, it'll bring you over to different things. So first we have the, it's a, the button, the icon is a car with a fuel thing on it, like you would, like it has on your fuel gauge. Uh, you click that, it'll show you your speed, and then on the right side of the uh, steering wheel, there's a button that says OK, and it has two arrows next to it. So you click down or up, it'll take you to different ones. So I'll go up just to make it simple. Uh, right now I'm at the speed and the drive mode. So it has D, has my speed, has the cruise on the top, has the temperature outside, and my mileage on the bottom. All right, so I click up, that's gonna show me trip B. See, I reset trip B every time I fill up. So as of right now, I've put 120.4 miles on this trip, 120.5 now, averaging 83 miles per hour, and I've driven for about an hour 27 on this tank. Trip A, I never reset trip A. Trip A has been going since I got the car, and I reset that as soon as I got the car so I know how many miles I put on it. The mileage counter resets every 10,000 miles. So as of right now, I've done 15,469.3 miles on this car. I've averaged 31, mi or 31 uh, miles per hour, and that's with city driving and highway driving. And my timer, almost at 100 hours. I have 96, minute, 96 hours and 59 minutes on this trip. So we'll see if that resets when it gets to 100 or if it stays and keeps adding on top of the 100. And I'll make sure to put an update in uh, probably my third video uh, when it does click over. And then at the very top is my range, my average MPG. So right now, my range is 447 miles on this tank remaining, and I'm averaging 34.1 MPG. But that's just because Utah has hills, and I set my cruise control higher than I should probably, just because I want to get home sooner. Not home, but back to my, uh, back to my uh, apartment slash dorm. So I'm cruising at 90 right now, and I'm averaging 34 mpg cruising at 90, going up a hill. Uh, let's see. So I'll hit the page button, and that'll bring me over to a little wrench icon. And as of right now, I have the tire pressure up, and it shows the tire pressure for all four sides, and it updates rather quickly. So the only gripe that I have about it is that you have to drive for you to be able to tell your tire pressure which is all right, I don't have an issue with that. It'd just be nicer that I don't have to uh, wait until my tires are spinning to be able to tell my tire pressure when I want to check it before I go on the trip, you know? And then I click down and that's gonna show me my service intervals. So right now I have my service interval set to 180 days or 3,500 miles. And that's how I kept this car going. Uh, I actually already have it posted up on uh, on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, you can find me in Orem, Utah, near Wolverine Crossing. Uh, if you see this video and you're interested in buying a 2017 Optima that's only, that only has, by the time I get to Utah, and probably before, by the time this car sells, we'll have close to 47,000 miles on it, hopefully. But my next service interval has been 700, 755 miles or 135 days. We'll definitely hit the mileage before I hit the days. And uh, every oil change, I always go with Valvoline for this car. And my Audi, I use Castrol because that's what uh, Audi recommends for it. And in my Jeep, I use Mobile One because Mobile One's a good oil for old cars. It has a lot of additives and I love to keep it that way. Uh, so that's that section of it. I'm gonna click back to my tire pressure and I'm gonna hit the page button yet again. And now that has the user settings. And anytime I use these settings, I have to be parked to adjust them. But the user settings that it allows you to look at, like the options you have, is the door, lights, sound, convenience, service interval, and other features. Uh, I'll play around with these uh, when I do my video three for the update on the car. 
but um, yeah, those are the options that you have. I'm gonna hit page, get back to my mileage and my range. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for that. In the center dash, we have the radio button, the media, radio and media share button. So you click left for radio, you click right for media. Then there's a phone button underneath that, and then there's seek track. I don't really use these that often. The only button that really has any like wear on it for me using it is the media button because anytime I get in this car, I'm always clicking over to either Bluetooth or if I'm so, if I'm feeling frisky, I'll plug my cord into the USB slot just so I don't have to wait for the Bluetooth to fully connect. And then of course we have the volume knob, the volume and power knob. Press that to mute, twist it right for up, left for down or you can just use the volume controls on the steering wheel to mute or up and down the volume. And then on the left of the steering wheel again is the up and down arrows on a blank switch. And you click up to skip, down to go back, all the good stuff. Uh, the next buttons that we have on the car is obviously the center screen that is the touch screen. So you can't control it with touch. And then we have the scan and setup buttons that, sit, that share. Scan obviously is for when you're using the FM or AM radio and it scans for the next uh, frequency that's actually using stuff. Let's try it. Oh, yeah, that's a semi. Okay, I'm gonna slow down and get back to the fast lane. And we're officially going under the speed limit because people don't know how to drive. If I'm being honest, Utah drivers are way worse than Colorado drivers, to be fair. Uh, let's see. So scan and setup. Setup is I never use setup because I never really set a whole lot of stuff up on this car. Uh, then we have the clock, which will just show me the clock. I know what time it is. I have my clock set to five, and you can adjust clock on that. Uh, I have mine set to five minutes ahead of time. So my clock shows 8:25, and as of right now, it's 8:20. Clicking over to 8:21. Uh, then there's the cat folder thing that I don't know what that is. I don't touch that. I haven't really dove into that feature. Don't plan on diving in. Oh, Jesus, come on. There we go. Don't plan on diving into that feature because I'm hoping that this car is sold so I can pay for tuition and so I can get a car that's more fitting to the uh, car scene. Um, and then center, we have, of course, our two center vents for the driver and passenger. The uh, scrolls to stop or open up the airflow and then the hazard button in the center. And down here in the cluster, in like the button cluster for the climate controls, we have the fan speed that goes from zero to four. And it's a nice little knob. I don't know, I always have it set on either zero or one, either maxed out AC or maxed out heat, just because depending on the, on the uh, time of year it is. And then we have the, just the head, head and feet, just the feet feet and uh, windshields, and then we have just the windshield, and then we have the rear defroster, the AC, and the uh, circulate button. And right above the climate control is this nice little screen that shows passenger airbag and shows passenger seatbelt stuff. Alright, on the left side here, next to the driver, we have the, uh, we have a couple blank panels, and that comes with, of course, the upgraded models like the EX, the uh, S and the SX trims. Uh, then we have, of course, the light controls that dims or brightens up your displays. Uh, let's see, uh, we gotta slow down again because it's still traffic. Then we have the gas button, the rear trunk button, and the traction control button. Interesting, traction control button. If you want to um, adjust you can turn off your traction and stability control with that same button. The only thing is you have to hold the button for like five or six seconds. I forget the exact amount, you might as well try it. One, two, three, four. About three and a half, four seconds to turn off stability control along with traction control. And I'm gonna turn that back on just because I'm cruising, don't need it off. So there's that. And then we move down to where the shifter and everything sits. So there's a slide panel that covers up your 12 volts and uh, your USB, your aux. You have two 12 volt inputs. So you could have two car chargers. You could have a, uh, I don't have mine with me, but usually I do have my, um, my radar detector. 